Uh, today, I, I would like to talk on uh, like uh, impact of big data in uh, uh, genomics, particularly, I would say, the state of art genomics. And also, I would like to propose the genome information oriented society as a vision. The genome, as you may know, that was coined by Hans Winkler, German um, genetist, in 1920. <coughs> Although there are several hypotheses, but this is quite, uh, I mean, a reasonable uh, explanation, which means uh, genome was coined by the fusion of two terms, gene and chromosome. And uh, since human genome sequence has been determined in almost 2000, then a tremendous advancement was made, particularly genomic information. And uh, you may call revolution. So nowadays, single molecule sequencing, like, like a PAC bio, uh, SQL, and even the nano nanopore technology would give you like a USB type of sequencing. Like a E. coli would be sequenced within two hours, and maybe human genome can be only the cost of one, less than $1,000. So such a, a tremendous advancement of sequencer is called next generation sequencer, NGS, including third generation sequencer. So advancement is like uh, uh, quite recently that the omics kind of uh, news media reported 10 countries in 100K genome club, which means the 100,000 individual genome sequencing as a project is going on. Like a UK, Biobank, uh, US, Japan, China, and France, Australia, and Estonia, uh, Turkey, and Dubai, uh, UAE, and Saudi Arabia. Actually, I'm working in Saudi Arabia as well as in Japan. Uh, actually, Saudi, Saudi Genome Project is going on, uh, hoping that we get uh, uh, 100,000 Saudi human genome sequence information. But uh, this is kind of uh, interim uh, report. We collected about 2,000 Saudi human genome information. Actually, this is exom SNP. And then we constructed about 6,000 individuals over the world. This is a phylogenetic tree. You may not be able to see, but this is 6,000 human genome information tree. As you see, uh, sorry, green port is a Saudi genome. So now such a tremendously important information is coming out, not only phylogenetic or you know, population genetics uh, implication. Of course, in the case of Middle East, first cousin marriage is so prevalent, which means like a recessive Mendelian uh, disease mutation can be easily identified. But amazingly, just one month ago, the Nature article was published. This is UK half a million individual information, including medical information. So half a million individual information has been collected. It's an amazing uh, you know, advancement. And they, not only, of course, human genome, even from my own experiences, my own contribution, like a rice genome, also like a quite recently quinoa genome, and even we sequenced tuna, bluefin uh, uh, tuna, and we sequenced nori, <laughs> re 
radio allergy. So tremendously, the, the, such a uh, advancement of genome sequencing are going on. So you can see this is from NCBI gen bank information. X axis shows the year, Y axis shows the number of nucleotide and the sequence, but the log scale, be careful, it's log scale. And the uh, green one, green line shows gene segment or genes, and the red one shows whole genome sequence data. So this is kind of information. If you look at those numbers, say the GenBank gene information would be uh, like a 279 billion nucleotide for genes, but when you look at the whole genome information, it's a three trillion. So which means whole genome information is much more than uh, gene sequence itself. So, as Professor Alan uh, uh, no Novo uh, last yesterday, he has mentioned like a genomics, transcriptomics, ribonomics, proteomics, interactomics, metabolomics, whatever you say, omics. So without making any working hypothesis, just you generate huge data. Then uh, later on you work on. But in order to do so, I think we have to really deal with big data, including machine learning, whatever, AI. The other example is like a marine metagenomics, which I'm working on. Like uh, I'm working on in Japan as well as Saudi Arabia, particularly Red Sea is very interesting, the sea, because high salinity and high temperate seawater temperature, and even 2,500 meters deep, such a deep sea, the temperature of the seawater is 23 degrees centigrade. It's so warm without any inflow river. Therefore, Red Sea is considered as kind of a possible model of global warming effect. Therefore, you can make a comparison between like uh, sea region surrounding Japan, much more temperate, and uh, the other Red, Red Sea, such as after global warming effect. <clears throat> so the simple outcome, in the case of the sea region in Japan, bacterial community or compositions has clear four season changes, like uh, uh, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And we, we examined like four years, and this is quite repeatable because we take a seawater every month as a given spot, then sequence directly, then obtain a huge amount of like a, uh, a genomic fragment, mostly bacteria or some uh, viruses. But anyway, uh, in the case of temperate uh, sea region, such as uh, near Japan, it has a clear for seasonal changes. But in the Red Sea, totally random, it's not really a big, you know, kind of a, a regular, no regularity. It's really random. So therefore, I think bacterial community is reflecting kind of situation where the global warming effect is really taking place. Also, we developed kind of a monitoring uh, robot. Automatically, we can take seawater. Then, uh, uh, actually, we have not installed like a USB type sequencing, but we can do it. Then uh, on site, we can get genome sequence data. Then those data will be regularly transmitted <coughs> through satellite to information analysis center. 
Therefore, you can check prevention of red tide, even officially, you know, a chance or locations. So anyway, real time monitoring for marine metagenomics is possible. So problem is, of course, so far, if you don't have any big machine for sequencer, you cannot do anything. But now, like um, sequencer is no big problem. How you select biosamples, how you have a biological significance, how you see industrial or medical application. The moreover, the, the data is so much accumulating, how you can analyze the data. Computational resources in addition to database is critical. So like a database issues, as we discussed yesterday, like who owns the data, how we can share the data, who would cost, you know, uh, the, the support the cost. And this is really immediate and important issue. And just 10 years ago, we wrote a paper in Nature how we should deal with big data in life science, but now it becomes immediate issues. And Jim Gray, who used to be working in Microsoft, he proposed fourth paradigm. First paradigm is experiment. Second paradigm is theory. Third paradigm is simulation or numerical calculation. Then fourth paradigm is data-oriented science or like innovation. So really the, the life science, particularly the field of genetics, genomics, is faced by fourth paradigm problem. So vision is here. Of course, biome, like our gut, there are a lot of microbes which are associated with disease too, but also like marine, seawater, and even air in the uh, supermarket. When you check the, uh, the metagenomics in the air, like um, the most abundant DNA in the air in the supermarket is not fish, not vegetables, it's human. So we are, you know, getting out the huge amount of DNAs. Also, maybe we can check viruses, others. And the soil, of course, it's very important to check microbial composition from agriculture point of view. Anyway, I think genetic, genomic diversity, sorry, not genetic, genomic diversity changes our society. As we discussed yesterday, personalized medicine, even the point of care, like a wearable, wearable you know, like health uh, monitoring system will be important, including genomic information. Even for like a marine system, as I explained, it's a kind of an information system. So you might, ha you might have heard of Mars. Mars is mobility as a services. So now the car will become automatic driving car. You don't have to dr drive. And the, the system is just like uh, Uber. So including like how you can call the, the, the car, then car would go to the place where the passenger needs. Like in the city can be divided into the grid. Then each grid has like uh, uh, colors where the, the very red, reddish color would have a needs for, for passengers. Very pinkish color will be less number of passengers. But automatically car goes to the place where passengers are waiting. And also the taxi fee would change every one minute. So this is a kind of a system. This is called mobility as services. I would say genome information can be in that way, genome as a service. This is, uh, I think, a future. 
So I would call this is genome information oriented society. This society is coming soon, but also, as I said, that uh, there are several problems to be solved. So anyway, I think DNA should be for world peace. And this is acknowledgement. Thank you so much for your attention.